interesting. Can everybody tell me what happens if I reduce this number? Everybody reduce that for me. Okay, divide by four on the top and the bottom. Divide by four on the top and the bottom. What do you get? Four. Four over twenty. Can I do anything else? You can reduce it by two. Okay, divide by two. And that's equal to? Two over ten. And we can reduce it some more. Divide by two again. One fifth. You say one fifth for that. Now, what you should have done, of course, and the way that we do this normally is we look for the greatest common factor, don't we? Do you understand that 16 goes into both of these? So we could have done this directly by doing 16 over 80 and divided by the greatest common factor, which is 16, and we would have gotten our one-fifth in one step, right? Is everybody clear on what I did there? This is reducing. Now, when you reduce radicals, it's a very similar type of problem. When you want to reduce this, and you have to reduce them, you have to look not for the greatest common factor because there's no other number, right? What you need to look for is the greatest perfect square factor. Here's perfect squares. One times one is one. Two times two? Four. Three times three? Four times four? Twenty-five. Thirty-six. Forty-nine. Sixty-four. Eighty-one. And one hundred. These are called perfect squares. And when you reduce a radical, you're going to look for one of these. Of course, one doesn't count, just like one doesn't count up here, right? We already know one goes into both of them, and it doesn't help. We're going to look for one of these that goes into 80. Does everybody see that four goes into 80? Yes. But you always, this is very important, you always have to look for the largest one that goes in. And, and there's a, it's a short list, isn't it? You understand what I mean, that there's not very many on here? So you need to always look for the largest ones or you'll mess it up. Now to do this problem, I'm going to divide this into two parts. 16 times what? 80 is equal to 16 times? Eighty. 16 times by 5, isn't it? Isn't this the same as this? Did you all see what I did? I looked for this perfect square factor, and then I factored it into two parts. Square root of 16 times the square root of 5. What is the square root of 16? This is the reduced version of that. If you look in a, in, in a, in a multiple choice test, and you get this answer, won't they put this in the, in the end? You understand that if this is the answer you get, this is the answer they're going to put on there? Same thing is true for square roots. If you get square root of 80 and it has one of these in there, you have to take it out like this. We'll do a little bit of practice playing with these. Trust me, you need all the practice you can get. We are calling this reducing radical expressions. It's a lot like reducing fractions, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's similar. It, it has some differences, but number one, square root of 12. Number two, square root of 28. Number three, square root of 50. Number four, square root of, let's go with 32. And number five, square root of 500. Okay. Try it. You know, the tax test is never going to ask you about this. The tax test is only 8th grade math, but if you all plan on going past 8th grade, 
and go on to college, you're going to need to know how to play with radicals a little bit. You're going to look for perfect square factors. That's your first step. Write your perfect squares along the side, everybody. Everybody write down some perfect squares right there. Don't worry about one. Write them down so you know what you're looking for. Now, guys, what's the first one? Four, nine, five, six, nine, sixty-four, eighty-one, one hundred. Get good at writing these very quickly because you're going to look for one of these. You're going to look for factors. Which one of these goes into twelve? Four goes into twelve, doesn't it? So you need to factor it. 12 is 4 times what? 3. Now, don't skip this step. It's really common that people want to skip this step too soon. Divide it up into two parts. Square root of 4 times square root of 3. What is the square root of 4? 2 square root of 3. This is the reduced version of that. Got it? I'll teach you why we did that a long time ago in a, in a bit. Go ahead and try some more. Twenty-eight is just like it. Guys, don't just copy what I do. Try it yourself. Which one goes into twenty-eight? Four. Four. That's the biggest. That's the biggest perfect square factor. Four times what? to learn how to do this a long time ago? We didn't have a push button that you could use to find the square root. So what we had to do is memorize the square root of 3 and the square root of 7 and the square root of 5 and the square root of 2 and then multiply it to find our numbers. I'll show you on the next one what, what I mean. Try the next one. Which one of those numbers goes into 50? Come on, guys. 55. Which one? 25. 25 goes into 50. That's right. Do it. Don't wait for me. You guys have to do this yourself. You're going to use this in every course from now on, especially next semester, because we're going to do some trigonometry and you have to be really good with your radicals to do, to do trigonometry real well. Did everybody get this one? Square root of what? Times? Two. two. And that's the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. You see why people want to skip this step? Don't do it too soon, because that really messes you up. Square root of 25? Five. Five times the square root of 2. Now, the way we learn to do this, and the reason we learn to do this, is that we would memorize things like the square root of 2. 
and the square root of 3, and the square root of 5, and the square root of 7. And then what we do is if we needed to find the square root of 50, we take our memorized version of the square root of 2. That's 1.0, uh, sorry, 1.414. And then we multiply that by 5 to get, a, to get an estimate. And so this is approximately 7.07. .07. Try it on your calculator. Try square root of 50. I'd like to have to memorize all those and do it like that. See, guys, got it too easy. The calculator just makes it way, way too easy. You, you're losing your arithmetic. That's why I make you practice so much. I don't want you to grab a calculator every time you can try and do something in your head. Did you all find one for 32? Yes. Which one? 16. 16 goes into 32. Remember, you don't always grab the first one you see because 4 isn't big enough. You, could, you have to go to the biggest one that will work. Try it. Sixteen times what? Two. Yeah. Approximately the square root of sixteen times two, which is the square root of sixteen times the square root of two, which is what? Four. Four times? Two. Square root of two. That's your reduced version. This is an exact answer. If you want an estimate, of course, the way we had to do it, we had to multiply that, you know, 1.414 by four to get our estimate. What is that? 5.6 something? 6.556? Uh, 5.656, isn't it? Is that a pain? But that's what we had to do because they didn't have square root buttons on our calculator. In fact, I didn't have calculators until third grade. I think that's when they first came out. 1972. Well, they cost $100, and they're, they're, they, did, they do exactly the same thing that the new ones do that you buy at the dollar store. The little card ones, you know? They weren't quite as complicated. They weren't quite as good as that, though, because they didn't do square roots or anything like that. They didn't have any memory. All right. What about 500? Which one of these goes? 100. 100 goes in there. You always want to get the big one. That is the square root of? 100 times? 5. And then you separate it. Square root of 5. And then that is? 10. 10. Square root of 5. That's the exact answer.